Um, first of all, I want to cover what Wikimedia Commons is. It's basically the image repository for all of um, Wikipedia. By simply, whenever you want to use an image, you can upload it to your local Wikipedia and use it there. But it's much more convenient instead of um, having to upload it for every language Wikipedia, for Wikisource, for Wikiversity, for every single project. If you could put it in one place, you end up with a much simpler thing. Now, I'm not going to cover every aspect of Wikimedia Commons. I'm presuming that people know how to put an image into an article and um, that kind of thing, how to find an image by looking at categories or search tools. If people want me to cover that, though, I'm quite happy to at the end. So, um, we're going to start with finding an image. In this case, I've gone to the Library of Congress and looked for an image of Django Reinhardt, a major jazz musician. And we can click on that. And by the magic of the um, multiple tabs, it is suddenly up. <laughs> and this is a, Wikime a page for a on Library of Congress. It offers the option to download it. It will often give you several options. You can download as JPEG, don't use those. <laughs> Um, because half the time you'll get like really tiny images. This page is actually better than most because one of the collections. So we can download as a TIFF, although we won't be in this case because we already did. <laughs> so if we go to Wikimedia Commons, we'll start by dealing with how to upload an image. Here is Wikimedia Commons, the main page. On the left-hand side, you'll see Upload File. If you click on that, and you don't, you'll get to this page, and it will give you a option to go on to the upload wizard, simply by clicking on it is entire, one of the options. And I'll try to guide you through things. The upload wizard is here. And you can select media files to share, simply by clicking the big convenient button. And then canceling out because I've uploaded it already. Once it's uploaded, and it takes about two minutes for a large file on a connection like this, you get to here and can continue. And this is where it starts to get important. You need to ch say whether this file is my own work or not my own work. I downloaded this from somewhere else. I may have done some minor changes to this, but this is inherently not my own work. So I need to say, this is not my own work. My source is the is over here in the Library of Congress. And I can just take that website and say that that is my source. There's a few templates you can use for this, but for the purposes of this, we're just going to say that it's the Library of Congress and give the direct link to the website. The author in this case is William P. Gottlieb, and all of this can be gotten from here to simplify things. I've started filling it out already. As you can see, and then the next bit is important. It gives you several options for how to do it and how to choose a copyright, and this is very, very important. First of all, maybe you found it somewhere that already has a license on it, a Commons license, say Creative Commons, and maybe it's one of these, and you can just click this box. Um, so just open up the tab. There you are. You could also say that it's a from Flickr, same idea. Um, there's a few options for the copyright has it expired in the USA, first published in the United States before 1923, or first published before 1923 and the author deceased more than 70 years ago. Those are probably the two most common re reasons why an image might be out of copyright unless someone has basically said in big letters, this is out of copyright, or possibly small little letters that this is out of copyright or I've released this for you to use. Another good reason is that it's an, a work of the US federal government or NASA. In this case, it's none of these. It's a special case where Gottlieb wanted all his stuff released as a public domain, and there's a special tag for that. There are a lot of exceptions, and we're not going to do all the copyright in this. We're just going to hit the, but yes, that is the correct tag. And when you hit next, you get to this page. You can rename the file. You can add a description. 
Reinhardt. I'm not going to fill this out fully because I've already uploaded. <laughs> and you could just hit, and you can add some categories, add a date it was created, uh, 1947, I believe, and so on. And it will ask you to fi fill things in, tell you all sorts of things. And it can be really freaking annoying about making sure you fill out every single field. Yes, I do, because I'm not going to be canceling this out in the end. Thank you, Commons. And it will tell you that this was previously uploaded because I planned things in advance. So once it's on there, you can just simply use it as normal. So that leads to the next section of my talk. Um, first of all, how do we know that this image is out of copyright? Well, there's a page on the Library of Commerce sites that says he released all his works into the public domain. So we know copyright, check. Have we uploaded the original? Yes. So we're now ready to move on and talk about file types. There are probably about six major file types on commons. Um, this is a standard JPEG. Um, it's very useful. It's small file size. It's um, widely understood. It, you can use it almost everywhere. It's a great file type, but if you repeatedly re-edit the file, you can run into trouble. Um, so when I'm uploading a file, I tend to upload three different files. The first is the original image, in this case a TIFF, a TIFF being a common archival file type. Um, a P if I've edited the image, I save it as a PNG, a portable network graphics. That's lossless, and you can edit that as many times as you want, and you won't get all these like gritty, blocky shapes all over it. But there is a problem, and how much this will be visible on that screen, I'm not sure, but look at the, um, the poles sticking up in that picture for a moment. And here it is as a PNG. And back as a JPEG, PNG. You may not be able to tell on the big screen from this distance, but it's actually, Wikipedia has a bit of a bug. PNGs are displayed slightly blurrier than JPEG files, so kind of have to do both. PNG so you can edit it again, JPEG so you can just um, use it everywhere and not have it be blurring. And as you can see at the bottom in other versions, I filled that out. Um, this is a standard form. It will probably be automatically added to your page. Um, and here's the original TIFF. Um, anyone notice anything about that compared to the other images? Yes, it's been reversed. This is an interesting fact. This is a negative, and um, it's very hard sometimes to tell which, wh which way you should flip a negative when scanning it. Can anyone spot the only clue to which way this should be flipped in this entire image? Yes, very small, but it's not the letters there on the le left-hand side. There's a tiny little bit of a sa sign in front of it. And that's the only way I could tell in the entire image that you need to ignore the letters off to the left and pay attention to that tiny sign, which is the right way around. File curation is, not, is an interesting thing. Um, there are, but that's the three major types for images, um, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF, but there's also SVGs, which are really useful for, for diagrams. This is a really beautiful diagram of a earthworm head, and it's by KDS4444, and if you zoom in on that a bit, you'll see just how much work he puts into this. Every little bit of that was drawn by him. It's an amazing bit, bit of work. And because this is an SVG, it's all, it's done in such a way that you can zoom in as much as you want, is a shorthand form of that. Um, there's also two other file types of importance. Um, sound files are used in AUG. We don't support MP3 due to um, basically, basically um, philosophical reasons. They're not a free file type, and we don't like supporting non-free file types. Um, AUGs can also be used with a slightly different encoding for um, video. 
We also support PDF files, so a lot of lectures, a lot of books, um, Wikisource, for example, loves to put books, books as PDFs, and there's all sorts of things to put th in there. Uh, DJVU is another common form that's very similar. And as I said, videos, here's a sample of some of the things, including um, Wikipedia events, and you'll find movies in here, and various other things. So, um, where can we find files for commons? I have a few major sites I can use, um, but there are dozens and dozens out there, so please don't take this as a complete list. The Library of Congress is good. Um, here I'm looking at some of the works by the American phot phot photographer, Francis Johnson. And the Museum of New Zealand is surprisingly good for releasing photographs. You can get all sorts of um, really high resolutions from them. Um, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, the National Library of France, is also great. The Met Museum in New York offers all sorts of things, although I'm not entirely sure how, well they, how much they release um, the 3D photographs, so be careful of that. But anything flat, like this one here, perfectly fine to use. And Google. This is a dangerous one. If you know that something's out of copyright or that someone's old enough that, and are reasonably sure that everything's been published, Google is an amazing tool for finding images. If you use it badly, uh, then you're probably going to accidentally violate copyright. But if Julia Margaret Cameron died in the, died in the mid 19th century and has a lot of amazing images. So if we just Google her, click on images, we will find quite a wide range of images. And here's a helpful trick. Search tools, size, larger than, I want big photos. Four megapixels or bigger. <laughs> and you can grab all of these. Some of them are probably going to be on commons, but some of them might not be. For example, here's one from the Huffington Post, of all places. Um, which leads to another question. What if, you, what if you get an image, but there's problems? Got it. Well, I recommend the GIMP software tool. It's a freely licensed tool, and you could just download it. Um, there's handouts there. Um, can you start handing out those handouts there? Sorry. <laughs> that will give you a br brief guide as how to do it. And so we could work on it, this image. Some of the things we could do to this are crop it, rotate it, um, I would, and just edit it. Um, the crop tool is this one, and for example, we can remove this border by just going like that. Yes, please. We can crop, you hover over it, you move the crop tool over, hit enter, and after a moment of processing, the border will have disappeared and is ready for upload. And that's a simple way, but first of all, but remember, always upload the original first. I did. But here we have it, cropped and a bit more ready for use in Wikipedia. Another thing we can do is to go onto colors, and since it's black and white, we can't do much with these, and also hue and saturation, dangerous. But we can go to levels and This would probably be a lot faster if I didn't have a million tabs open for my talk. And we could just darken up a little bit, lighten up the whites. Using a touchpad. And the image becomes a little bit more visible. Another trick we can use is to, if we zoom in fully, and I've been working on this for a while, You can see that, that there is some damage on this, all these, white, all these black spots. If we, using the healing brush tool, and I like to do this one at about with a full brush, you can go over, grab a bit of the image, and just go over, and a few dots disappear every time you click. Um, this should be used a bit more carefully than I'm doing it now, but 
I have five minutes, so yes. <laughs> and as you can see, every time I'm clicking, a few of the black dots are disappearing. And finally, I'd like to um, swap over. Finally, one more one warning about cropping. If the image has sections of it that are part of the original image, like the um, all the information below it, never crop it and only upload the version without the um, text, because that text is very important to reusing it, very important to identifying the image and that kind of thing. It's perfectly fine to, to take a crop of that and upload it as a second image, but not over that. Um, that's everything I wanted to cover in the talk, so I'm going to open the floor to questions now, if we have time.